you used to call me uh, my king, my lord, uh, my superman, my this and my that. Nanny, my, uh, uh, but now all you call me is a uh, papa maker or uh, hey you, or you just call me by my name. And then the woman says, You used to call me sweetie, you used to call me my creamy, my honey bunches of oats, you used to call me this and that, but now you just call me uh, my man gozi. Uh, you don't do me, you don't do this for me anymore, you don't do that for me anymore. And the husband and wives are, you know, beginning to complain and are beginning to murmur. This thing we call the tongue. This thing we call the tongue. Now, if you see the picture I had at the beginning, you know, of my video, I will under, I will, you will better understand what I'm talking about. Hey, precious people, how's everyone doing today? I hope you guys are doing great. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, I welcome you. My name is Precious Quadiaro, and today I am spreading God's love in our in our marriages and I'm talking about something I called a dry and a tongued out marriage. It's like your marriage is in a wilderness and it's dry. It's thirsty. Now I have this thing, the candle. Now I have this candle. This is a bigger candle, just like the words we say. And this is a smaller candle, still the same words we say. Sometimes they are different magnitude, but they are fire nonetheless. The Bible says, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So see, now this is, I, I set this, this candle some minutes ago and it's been melting. Now I'm going to drip it so you see. You see? You see? You see? It's melting. It's melting. Yeah. So what happens? The things we say to our husbands and our wives, you know, can set our marriages five years, ten years backwards. And I know that what what marriage is is it's not easy. You know, marriage is more than the the bridal train and the groomsmen and the ashwebi and the dancing. And you know now they have the dance hall, they have the choreographed choreographed dance. It's it's I mean it's beyond that. Marriage is hard work because you are married to a different entity, someone that's different from you, with different background, different ex life experiences, different mindset, different childhood, different trauma and baggages. Oh yes, we come into our marriage with most times our unhealed trauma so, and you're trying to merge and become what? One. That is not easy. So what happens now when you have children, even without children, day to day living, you know, you become complacent. Or you become complacent, you're like, eh, I have him now, he's mine, he's not going anywhere. Or I have her now, she's mine, she's not going anywhere. The things that we used to do to spice up our marriages, the things that we used to do to, you know, build it up, we begin to relax. And when we start relaxing, we stop seeing that man that was your prayer point every day you prayed, morning, night, and day for him, for God to send that man into your life, and God sent him. But now, what happens? You go to God and say, God, this man you gave me a... <laughs> This kind of husband, this kind of husband, me, I cannot do this anymore. Or the man goes and says, hey, God, this woman you gave me, is she actually my wife? Are you sure she's not from the ancestral lineage of, lineage of Jezebel? Are you sure? This woman wants to kill me, oh, she wants to give me high blood pressure. And we start complaining. And then you add children in the mix. Oh, God, that child that you were praying for, when, he was, when the child was born, you would take selfies, you would take pictures, you would do this and that with that child. Now the child is growing up and acting like a child. And the child is getting on your every last nerve. What do you do? You start complaining. Oh God, this child, this child's behavior. Me, I don't understand it. These children want to kill me. Oh, hey, they were once miracle. Your husband was once your miracle. Your wife was once your miracle. That child, that job, those things were once our miracle. So now related to our marriages, when we, when we stop seeing these things that were once miracle, we start seeing them as stressful. Now, one of the things that you begin to know that you're getting into a dry and a tongued out marriage is when ungratefulness sets in. Complacency first and then ungratefulness. You stop being grateful for those things that your spouse, that your husband used to do that will make you smile. Or those things that your wife used to do that will make you smile. Or perhaps they stop doing it. And sometimes just because of life happening, they are busy going to work, taking care of the children, you know, trying to take care of the family. And they, and they stop doing those things that they used to do for you. But they still do things to make sure the family is okay. So that is also love and nurturing nonetheless. 
but it's not directed to you as a husband or you as a, as a wife. And we start complaining. I'm going to relate this to the Bible. The children of Israel, they are like the, uh, the quintessential murmurers and complainers of the Bible. I mean, God delivered them from Egypt. He promised, he told Moses, I, I, you know, take them to the promised land. But we know the children of Israel, if Exodus, Numbers, they kept complaining. Oh God, this wilderness will kill us. So Moses, you brought us out here to die. Oh, there's no food. God sent manna. Oh, this manna, this. So God, oh, we are going to die of thirst. Oh, we are going to die of this. We are going to die of that. And they began to complain. And one thing, even Miriam was also complaining towards Moses' leadership. And what happened? God cursed her with leprosy. So, murmuring and complaining, you know, and, you know, talking back at your spouse. I, you, I say one, she says one, you say one, you say one. What happens? You begin to, it's like this candle. It begins to melt, begins to chip at the foundation of your marriage. That is what actually happens. So the children of Israel complain so much. And sometimes God sends the serpent. Sometimes God will actually, you know, be like, what is happening? I think I should give you some hard time for you to understand and appreciate what you have. Because I've heard it said that it's when you lose your, it's when people lose what they have, then they actually know that this thing was actually a gem in their hands. You know, so what, I'm, what am I trying to say? In the same way, God delivered the children of Israel. But because of their murmuring and their complaining, they made Moses fall from grace. Now Moses even had to destroy the Ten Commandments and that cost him his entry. And then God raised Joshua, you know, to lead them into the promised land. But he made sure that all those people that complained, they died in the wilderness. They kept going around the mole hill. A molehill. The land of Canaan was right in front of them, but they couldn't enter because they refused to learn the lesson of being grateful, of being appreciative of what God has been doing in their life as Israelites. But at the end of the day, there was hope because some of them made it into the promised land. What am I saying? Now I'm going to give us some tips that will help us, you know, to get us out of this dry, tongued out marriage. That rather than for us to, you know, begin to see what our partner, our husband, our wife does bad. How, how can we get to the place where we get to appreciate them? How? Now I'm going to say number one is having a, a, a spirit of gratefulness. Having a thankful spirit. A thankful spirit is where you choose. You actually choose to be happy. Whether they are doing what you want them to do. Or not you choose to be happy now when you have this spirit <laughs> the enemy will try you the enemy will try to come in your ear will come will, will remind you look at what he said he said you are this and he, she said you are that and it want to make you you know mess up your your you know that mind that you have but I want you to know that if you have the spirit of thankfulness you have won the battle in one part number two is to be thankful actually open your mouth and say it your wife can go to the saloon and make her hair look beautiful and she just walks into the house and you see that she's beautiful and you don't say anything but in your mind you say oh this my wife is so beautiful i love this hair can she read your mind she cannot read your mind you have to actually open your mouth and say it praise is not praise until it is spoken out speak it out let her know that the hair is beautiful or even on the days that she looks a mess you pay her a compliment I mean, that day is one of the best days. I'm telling you, in the night, you might get some more, you know what, y'all are adults. And then for the husbands, you know, wives, begin. you go back to the time when everything he did was amazing. You know when you first got married, all the googly eyes and the I love you and the kiki 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 and the kaka kaka. You know, you go back to that time, begin to see him for who he is, begin to appreciate the little things he does. When he does something for you, you say thank you. When I first got married, you know, my, the honeymoon phase, everybody goes to the honeymoon phase. My husband could do no wrong. But then as time begins to go by, I'll be like, oh, this is what he used to do for me. You don't do it anymore for me. Or let me say, he goes and buys you a dress and you don't like this dress. Or maybe your style has changed so women some women some women actually said oh why didn't you give me give me the money so i can go buy what i like you know i don't i don't like this kind of clothes anymore why you take the dress or you take the gift he bought you you smile sometimes we fake it and say oh thank you i love it even go as far as to use it let them know that their effort is appreciated the same way for the wife the same way for the husbands i know some men that eat food that their wife cooks and they're like mm, this food mm, 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 mm. but they eat it with a smile on their face that is marriage that is how you build your home up you begin to look for little little things they do here and there at least in a day make sure you say at least thank you three to five times that is my goal 
three to five times I say thank you. I say thank you. Even when I serve my husband a meal, he says thank you. It makes me feel like, oh, he appreciates that, you know, I'm, that this is what I, I love to do. But when I hear him say thank you, he fills my heart with joy. And I, when he hears me say, oh, thank you for, you know, cleaning this today. Or thank you for going to work today and taking care of the family. This is things that we all do. But the little thank you here and there. And when you form it as a lifestyle. The spirit of complacency, the spirit of nagging and complaining or, you know, going back and forth. I say one and you say one. That thing will not have any space in your house. So be thank, be, have a grateful attitude, have a thankful spirit. And number two, actually open your mouth and say thank you. And take it a step further. When you have in-laws, you know when you will call your, your parents, you say, ha, ah, mama, mama, this is my husband, he did this, or he did that, though. I hope when the things, when things, you shouldn't be doing that in the first place, but if you have done it, when things get back to normal, pick up the phone too and call them and say, ah, mama, now he is amazing, you know, if you see what he does, thank God, though, God has answered my prayers. Don't leave your parents or whoever you complain to hanging and they will be, you know, uh, be mad at your husband thinking he's the same person, why this man has been making, you know, efforts to change. Or you that will call your, your mother and say, oh, mama, this is my wife. Oh, this is my wife. She did this and she did that and she did that. And then you are surprised why your mother doesn't like your wife. When you go back and tell her, her things that should be between you and your wife. We actually need wisdom in this kind of things. So make sure that in front of your parents, in front of your friends, you uplift your spouse you say thank you you know you compliment them in front of other people what this i'm telling you what this can do to your marriage when you compliment your spouse in front of other people ah it will it, it, i mean the love in your home will begin to grow it will begin to grow because they will they will want to do more the human nature is when you provide reinforcements you know they do more that is human nature but when you complain and you complain for what they are doing they stop doing that is human nature these are things, these are laws of nature that we cannot cheat. So I just hope that this has blessed somebody today. Because the same way that despite the murmuring and the complaining that God had mercy on the children of Israel and he brought them into the promised land. The promised land that God has for your marriage, for my marriage, for our marriages, you know, God will take us to that promised land. And he will fulfill everything that he has in store for you as a husband, for you as a wife, for your children, for your home, he will fulfill it. He will take us out from the dry, the desert, the wilderness. He will take us to and tongue out marriage to a, a tongue of praise, a tongue of appreciation, a tongue of gratefulness, a tongue of thankfulness. And I hope this message has blessed my precious people today. I will see you in the next video. I love you all. Bye for now.